is going on today, guys? This is, oh, forgot the play map. Well, we won't edit that out. But what is going on today, guys? This is Tony from Team Divine Pro here coming at you with a, another deck video, uh, not deck video, but a uh, video segment. This is going to be on Cardfight Vanguard, and this is going to be called, uh, talk about, it's kind of like improving your game, so I, I will probably title it improving your game, but it is talking about Cardfight Vanguard and how to be a better player. I could probably call it that. No, I think improving your game is, no, I'll say how to be a better player. Or something. I'm not sure yet. I'll, I'll decide. Maybe just be called uh, Hitting Magic Numbers. Because that's probably... This is what the segment's all about. Now, most of you probably do know what Hitting Magic Numbers is all about. So, I won't really explain it. That... I will, like... This, so, you can probably just, like, uh, skip this video. But, anyways... Hitting Magic Numbers. Let's get into it right now for you newer players. Or those players that just don't know what people are talking about. So, Magic Numbers. What are they? They are the number that I'll maximize guard, maximize uh, the me that maximize the requirement for guard out of your opponent's hand. So, say for example, you have PBO. It has just 11k, and then you have you are your opponent. You are playing Spectral Duke, and you have a 10k body, and then you have rear guards. You have the Garmor, and then you have the guy here. Now, what do you want to do? And you have no back row, you have no guys in your back, but you do have cards in your hand. So, what do you want to do? Let's see what we can get. Pull here. You have, in your hand, you have a Dindrain. I mean, uh, Spring Bees, uh, Nindrain, Gareth, and Slagle Dagger. Now, where do you want to put these? That is the question. You'd probably want to put the... So now, magic numbers are the numbers that are intervals of 5 or 10 plus above the Vanguard, or the opponent's Vanguard, or anything to the rear. So, magic number for this guy would probably be, since he's only 11k, 16 or 21, or anything with that. So you can... So they are required to at least drop either 10, 15, or above for the guard. That's usually what happens, so that's what you want to do. Now, if they're 13k base, 50, uh, it'd be 18, 23 above for the 10, the 10 or 15k block or higher. And then if they're 10k, 15, 20 or 25 or whatever you want. So against an 11k Vanguard, what you want to do is since you have a 9k Vanguard here, you put the either the the Slego Dagger or the Gareth here, so that you maximize your so you get either 16 or you get 17 or you can get a 19, a 18 here. And then for the Spectral Duke, since you have a 10k, you have only 10k, you can play the Dindrain or anything here to make at least above 16. So you always want to have at least above the magic number to, to do it. Now, if you have, your opponent has rear guards and say like they, tri they trigger check something, they trigger check something, well then here's what you do. Your opponent has a Masquerade here. They don't give any effects to that. You, he, the Masquerade, it's, Magic numbers are 14, 19, 24, and above. So then you can look for something that... And you've checked a trigger. You can give the effects to anybody here. So you could probably give it to the Garmor, who doesn't have a booster. So you can attack for 15, so they require 10 to guard this attack. Rather than having 5, because if you gave it to here, then they could... Oh, they could, it would work too. Anything here would work fine. But if you had, say... Say if you had put it here, then you put a... No, say you put it here, then you put that... You're swinging for 21 here, so you can hit here, here, or here. So, really, magic numbers are quite simple concepts to do. You just have to be able to do the good math, the right math. Just like how I've been saying, the hard fight banger, it's a math game, just like any other game. Magic numbers are very simple to comprehend, and I hope you guys did understand this for you new up-and-coming players. You know, like, Magic numbers isn't really difficult to understand or to grasp. It's just that you need to read. You have to understand that your bang, perhaps sometimes your banger, your opponent's banger is 13k or something. You have to make the right reads as to if you, what to call and everything because you could your opponent could have this. Your opponent could have 
the like you could have you could have uh, an eleven key Vanguard. They could have a full field. However, want they want to fill up a full field. They could have a full field. And then you have a hand of like uh, I wouldn't say Jank, but you have that. You have that. No, actually, let's not do that. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do, this. Let's do that. And let's do one more. Let's see. I haven't used Blaster Dark in here, so let's put the let's put the Avatar out. So now you have three options for cards. Where do you want to put? What do you want to use? Well, it all it really all depends also on what cards you have in your hand. So staying with true with the uh, card flip, with this you probably end up having. And let's not say you have. The dead boosters, you have a booster like that, you have a booster like that. That's it. Yeah, you only have two boosters. So, what do you do? You have three guys that can attack and two boosters. Now, what would you do? Since you have, and your opponent has a 10k Spectral Duke and you have an, uh, an 11k PBO. What I would do is call the Blaster Dark so that you have at least an Interceptor. No, actually, uh, the Masquerade. So you have a 12k body and an Interceptor. Then, depending if you have a perfect guard or not, I would probably drop this so that it's not dead in your hand, and then you at least have a, a guard in your hand instead of not having instead of having useless useless stuff in your hand. Because then you at least have a 10k body, and you have a rear guard that's much more that's much stronger than a 9k body, and you have the guard in your hand instead of having it to intercept it. But that's all if you don't have a perfect guard. Then it really depends. Now what do you do from here? Well, this guy goes up to 12, so he can hit, he does not hit a magic number anywhere. But what can? If you put the chair in behind, 12 plus 8 equals 20, you could hit this for, so they have to drop at least 15. You can drop, attack this for this, so they have to have 15, or they have to drop 15 here. Or, what else do you do? You can draw, you can put it here, put the Nightmare Painted here, and that attacks for 18, 16, all right. Or you could attack for 18. 18 is good against the uh, crossfights. So against him, you could have had 18, and then you could have required 10 out of his hand. In all reality, it's really it's quite simple to comprehend that magic numbers is just a math game, and that you just need to know where where to place, uh, which guys to place out, when to place them, and that you have to think ahead sometimes because your opponent could retire things and all that just if they're playing Kagero. but anyways guys i hope you guys did enjoy this segment i'm sorry i haven't been doing touching card fight banger a lot it's just that you know it's been uh not as exciting as something like way swords at the moment but i will keep on doing more videos on this stuff and i hope you guys did enjoy it i hope the camera recorded all this anyways guys please like comment uh whatever you want to do it does help, though, please, if you do subscribe. And uh, this has been Tony from Team Divine Pro, signing off.